shall see from Paper Rock to your studio. And this is the last of the footage I have left over from the month of March. Um, there's two techniques on here, printing with leaves and gel printing experiments <laughs> with uh, water-soluble crayons. So I went out to the backyard and got some different plants. Here in Arizona, hard to harvest leaves that you can print with because everything has thorns. And we have a lot of cactuses and things, but I was able to get a few things and I threw them in some water to keep them fresh. So when the, on this first print, they were kind of wet. And um, I'm using, starting out trying out the Dilutions paints, which I don't have luck with on my gel plate in Arizona because it dries too quickly. So I put some um, slow drying solution I squirted that on the plate first and then put this olive color over it and then I laid my uh, leaves on there and pressed down with a paper towel because the leaves were just sopping wet and I thought that that would be a good way to remove some of the water and also some of the paint and that did work. Um, I, I had both my 12 by 12 and my 6 by 6 out kind of alternating sometimes using the six by six as a palette and sometimes using it as a plate. So this first print, um, I decided to pick up what was left with it. There wasn't that much left on the plate uh, after I used the towel, but I thought there was enough that I could pick it up on one of my cardstock pages using some Naples yellow um, acrylic. And it's pretty subtle, but it's definitely there. And then I had applied some unbleached titanium on the other plate and I decided to try to pick it up with some of the Dilusions paints without putting any slow drying solution with it. And I'm doing some tags and I'm not sure what happened there, but it didn't come out exactly the way I wanted. You can see the leaf prints on there, but they're really subtle. And I guess that's because maybe some of the olive paint was still on there when I put the titanium the unbleached titanium. I'm not sure. But anyway, it wasn't as dramatic as I expected. <laughs> it was. I was kind of surprised by the effect. So then I decided to try some more stark colors. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, everyone. You probably all just yawned with me. Um, <laughs> to try like a dark and a light. So I put titanium white on there, put this the leaves on, and then picked them off and now I have all the leaf impressions to print on some black cardstock and that that was a pretty cool print um, you'll see the prints the ones that I thought were worthy anyway um, at the end of this section of the video they'll be there so you can take a look at them a little bit closer slow down the video if you want to so then I put away the Dilutions paints. I just don't have any luck with them. They just, they don't work well on my plates. But I think, and I think it's because of my climate. I think that other people could be fine with them, but in my climate, not so great. So that one was a cleanup print of what was left from the titanium white. And I used some uh, teal colored paint. I like that one a lot. Hopefully I'll bring it closer to the screen here maybe that one was an interesting one also a clean up plate print <laughs> not clean up plate clean up print so then I thought going sticking with the darker colors that I would try with some brown because of course you know leaves autumn seems like you should do some warmer colors maybe same process I spread a thin layer of the brown paint, picked up the excess after putting my leaves down, and actually this cleanup piece is pretty cool. I'll show that. That one turned out pretty cool because it had some of the olive stuff left on it from a different cleanup. It's wrinkly, but I can, can make it flat. And I'm not really sure why. I put that unbleached titanium on there. I guess I wanted some place to put it. <laughs> it actually didn't have as bad effect as it could have. It could have completely obliterated everything. And it was just 
you know, you kind of get in a rhythm. I don't know what happened, but anyway, <laughs> I ended up putting some uh, teal and bright green over the top of it and pulling the print. And it made the print a lot more subtle, as you'll see when I pull it, um, because of the very thin layer of unbleached titanium on there. That shouldn't have been there. I should have just not put that. I guess I was cleaning off my brayer, trying to make the layer thinner on the 6x6, and I just put it on there. But it's a pretty cool print anyway. It's just that that unbleached titanium layer obliterated some of my print of the leaves. But it's a cool effect anyway. I liked it. Then I thought maybe the leaves would make stamps since they had a, quite a bit of... Uh, paint on them building up so I decided to do uh, teal and copper which is a good combination and I just did it on tags because I wasn't sure what was going to happen and I'm still making these tags to make a little technique tag book thing so that was kind of cool which worked pretty well actually then I, of course, have some left on my 6x6. This is probably my favorite print because I went in there with the kind of periwinkle type color of purple over that teal and the, it came out really cool. I like it. Of course, purple. Of course I like it. <laughs> So this part is using water-soluble crayons on the gel plate. And I really wasn't behind this one. I did not think anything would work. Um, this was one of the prompts, uh, I think it might be day 27 maybe, from the 31 days of gel printing. So I got every, out every type of water-soluble crayon that I have. And since, since this experimentation, I have seen a couple other people's videos and they used scribble sticks from Dina Wakely and they used Marabou art crayons and those two products seem to work better than anything that I have. What I have here out is some Lyra water soluble oil pastels. I have some gelatos. I have some Stampin' Up watercolor crayons that are really old. And then, of course, I have my, my favorite Neo Color 2s. And I figured, since I was just kind of going to be playing around and trying to figure out how this worked, that I would get out some of my smaller plates because in all of my videos up to this point, you haven't really seen my smaller ones. I have a set that has circle, triangle, and square uh, mini plates. And then I have this 4-inch circle and a 3 by 4 rectangle. And then, of course, my 6x6, six six, you've seen a lot of that. Um, I don't generally use these in the way that I would use a bigger plate, like putting something on it and then putting the paper on top and picking up the color. I use it like a stamp. So these, these little tiny ones are great for, like, if you want to do a page in your art journal or something like that, you can make some interesting um, backgrounds using them by using them more like a stamp to stamp the color onto something. And as you can see, I have plastic mounts for them. I just bought a sheet of acrylic replacement stuff for windows, like it's plastic stuff that you would replace a glass window with, and cut it up with a saw, which was kind of annoying. But anyway, I have, I have them for all my plates to, to mount them onto and to, to hold them flat as I'm using them. That's the biggest thing is having something firm underneath so that the, the plate doesn't get all jelly on you. So I'm trying about all kinds of things here. I am trying the gelatos, which go onto the plate very nicely, but I am struggling getting any color off of it. 
I tried um, things over stencils, you know, to, to see how that worked. Um, just putting the paper onto the gelato, I thought would pull it off because it seemed pretty creamy, but that didn't work. So then I'm putting white acrylic over the top of it to try to pull the color off. And I do discover that some of these products stain the plates and I couldn't get the color off of it, but I assume it'll wear off eventually. It's not like coming off on anything. It's just not releasing at all. So the same with the Lyra water soluble oil pastels. They went onto the plate very nicely, but they didn't come back off. So then I spray some water on it and then I end up putting some acrylic on it to see if I could pull it off you know, like a dry print. Just not really having a whole bunch of luck. The best thing that I've actually seen, and you guys can go out and search for, you know, other people film their process doing this. Besides me, I'm not the only one. Um, is when people just kind of used it to make a wash background on watercolor paper. <laughs> and I did not try that. I didn't try watercolor paper at all. Um, I was using it like you would a gel plate and to be honest if I need a watercolor wash background I'll just make one I don't need to use a gel plate to do that so I know somebody some people enjoy this but I found this pretty unsatisfying myself so you guys can give it a try if you have scribble sticks I hear the scribble sticks work and I hear that uh that at Creativations, Dina Wakely was even demonstrating her new ones. Um, I think it's Dina Wakely, Scribble Sticks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then I think the Marabou art crowns are similar in consistency to the Scribble Sticks. Also, you might try Distress Crayons. I think they might be similar as well because Dina Wakely's Scribble Sticks and the Distress Crayons are made by the same company, so I imagine they might be similar in consistency, but I just, I don't need every single water soluble, soluble crayon product in the universe in my studio at this point, because like I've said before, for the, the uses that I use these for, the Neo Color 2s are my favorite. I love them, and I will be trying them out on the plate, which, um, they do, you know, kind of work. I just, I'm not sure why you would do this. I, I, I guess that's, that's ultimately what I'm saying is, is just scribble it onto the paper. I don't see, see a need for this. It's just like, oh, somebody said, oh, I think I'll do, try this. And I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm being a negative Nancy. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I am trying it, trying it out. Um, that's deli paper. Uh, the very first ones I did were on napkin layers. You know how when you're going to collage with napkin, you peel it apart and you have those blank layers. Um, I thought, oh, that would work on that, but it didn't. It just, because I had to try to use water and stuff, the napkin just shredded. So that was a, also a failed experiment. Um, yeah. I thought that the I first my first opinion was that the Lara ones were gonna work because see they go on there nice and smooth. Is it kind of I don't know oily I guess, but then couldn't get them off. Nothing comes up, hardly. So then you spray water on it and you try it again. It seems like there's a lot of color on there, but nothing comes off onto your paper. Like I can see the pa I can see the color. So then you realize, oh, that's staining. <laughs> so then I got out my hand sanitizer, which back in the day, that was what they recommended for cleaning your gel plate. I don't often do this, but I thought maybe the hand sanitizer having a little bit of alcohol in it would clean that, that staining off, but it didn't at all. So they're just stained. So here's where I get out the Neo Colors and I try to write with them on the plate, but they don't. the color doesn't come off onto the plate very well. So I get a little cup and I put some water in it 
and then I dip the crayon into the water and then use it on the plate and that seems to work pretty well. So I'm just kind of coloring in this um, half tone dot stencil with a bunch of dots in different colors just messing around to see if if the color makes a difference because some of them are more translucent than others just like any kind of a color palette and you know just messing around I think I've put away the little plates at this point or they're there but I'm not going to use them anymore so then I take a print of that and it's actually pretty cool it's kind of a grungy look and then I pull a second print with uh, acrylic paint over the top and that one actually works really nicely so I was pretty happy with this print with the neo colors. I could see a use for that, especially the one with acrylic because now it's all sealed up so it can be used as uh, a mixed media layer. So then I think well let's try that with that same type of an idea with the um, gelatos because they're nice and creamy and they should work really great, right? It seems like they should. It seems like the gelato should be the best ones but you will see the results. Really not the best ones either. They're okay. There was some left on the, the uh, stencil, so I thought I could print it back off onto the plate, but nothing really comes up. So then I try it with acrylic to peel it off, which works a little bit better. With the gelatos, I got some like crumbles when I was doing it. So you saw when I rolled off my brayer, there was like little spots. Those are the crumbles. It crumbled a bit. But now my plate's pretty well stained. <laughs> so then I thought, well, something that I used to do back in the day was to use a water brush and like flick the color off. And I thought maybe I could get a flicking effect on the plate, but it wasn't really working. So then I thought, well, let's make it wet. Let's make it wet and see what it looks like, you know, with the with a brush. What would that? How would that work? Which is now wet. So then I color into it because there's a bunch of wet, and of course it's beating up on the plate because. It's not a, it can't, it's non-absorbent. It's, you know, I, I don't know. So you can see the difference between the crayon versus the gelato and how it looks on the plate. How the gelato is smooth on the plate. It doesn't beat up as much, but then the crayon in the water beads up a lot. Usually I can figure this stuff out, but I wasn't figuring much of anything out. <laughs> so then this is a cardstock stencil. And I think the nature of it being able to like really onto the plate, you know, it really sucks down onto the plate. It actually worked really well. Um, this is like a die cut, like a really intricate cardstock die cut. And it's really keeping any anything that's trying to come out underneath the stencil from coming off because it's it's stuck right down on there nicely. And then I use some unbleached titanium and this print pulls out really nice. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this if you want to. Um, this will be added to my extensive my obsession with gel printing playlist. Bye-bye.